Hi everyone, welcome back to our weekly technical insight. Going into the last week of January, US, the world's largest economy, seems to be marching on strongly with the latest GDP data last week showing a 3.3% expansion on a yearly basis. This is adding on to mounting evidence which includes the non-farm payroll numbers and the CPI data earlier this month that we are still on track for a soft landing without sparking an economic meltdown despite the historical elevated interest rate at 5.25 to 5.5%. On the other hand, our Singapore shares ended the week higher last Friday as regional markets traded in a mix. Our STI index ended in the green on the last trading day of last week, up 0.38% or 11 points to close at 3,159 points. Japan Nikkei 225 index was down 1.34%, while Shanghai Composite Index was almost flat, rising just 0.14%. Hong Kong Hang Seng Index continued the slump since the beginning of the year, extending the slide down 1.6% last week to become the biggest loser in the region. On the weekly view, all three US indices ended in the green and they are now 100% above their pandemic lows. The Dow Jones Index rose 0.65% for the week, to finish at 38,109 points, an all-time closing high. Broad-based S&P 500 index advanced 1.06% to close at 4,890 points, its second winning week in a row. Tech-heavy Nasdaq Composite Index added another 0.94% to finish the week at 15,455 points. On the Asia side, Hong Kong Hang Seng Index managed to close its first winning week of the year. The benchmark index rose 4.2% to 15,952 points. Foreign investors piled into mainland listed stocks buying US $1.5 billion worth of equities in the first four days of the week. The Hang Seng Tech Index also managed to finish the week in the green, rising 1.81% to finish at 3,186 points. Our STI Index joined in the rally, rising 0.23% to finish at 3,159 points. Breaking down the performance of the STI index, the local banks were among the gainers, with the three banks due to report their earnings of Q4 2023 in the coming week. DBS inched up 0.16% last week to $32.10, continued to see an expansion in its net interest margin in Q3 of 2023. But for OCBC and UOB, that's not going to be the case. UOB was the biggest winner among the three banks, jumping 2.33% to close at $28.50. OCBC also managed to put in a decent performance, rising 0.54% to finish the week at $12.98. SGX also performed well, similar to OCBC, adding 0.52% to finish the week at $9.66. The biggest winner last week was Genting Singapore, rising 3.59% on Friday or 3.5 cents to close at $1.01. For the week, the counter rose 2.54% as Singapore and China announced a visa-free travel deal which allowed travellers to visit their countries for up to 30 days without a visa. And this came a day after MBS reported that the Singapore Integrated Resort Operator net revenue for casino grew by 84% to US $741 million. At the bottom of the index was tech company Venture Corp, which fell 1.89% or $0.26 cents to close at $13.48. For the week, Venture lost 1.17%, its second consecutive losing week. So for this week's technical analysis, let's look at both Chenjing Singapore and Venture Corp. First, let's take a look at integrated resort operator Chenjing Singapore. Last Friday, their share price jumped 3.59% or 3.5 cents to $1.01 on the visa-free travel agreement between Singapore and China and fellow competitor MBS also reported massive revenue growth that boosted investor sentiment in the gaming sector. Looking at the chart, Jiangling share price was on a downtrend since hitting a high of $1.15 in April last year. Prices bottomed out somewhere in October after hitting a low of $0.81.5. And since that October low, prices have been on an uptrend again, hitting a high of $1.03 in December. Last Friday, the jump in share price actually tested the 11 December high at $1.03 but were unable to break above that, forming a higher high that will confirm the continuation of the uptrend that we see in the past three months. So now the daily chart of Genning Singapore formed a double top formation, which suggests that prices now are kept at this level and may be range bound going forward. The MACD indicator is currently negative with both the MACD line and the signal line both trending downwards. 
This shows that there's negative momentum in the share price now and prices are likely to head downwards. The RSI indicator was largely below the 50-point neutral mark for much of last week until the jump on Friday. The latest reading on the RSI now is 61, showing healthy uptrend momentum before hitting the overbought mark at 70 points. So with both indicators contradicting each other, we are neutral on Genting Singapore share price heading into the near term. However, for the mid to long term, the past three months has shown that the uptrend is still intact for now. Hence, if Genting Singapore share pull back to its 200 days moving average, which is the red line that you see here at 94 or 95 cents, that will signal a firmer entry for a right uptrend following the mid to long term trend. Next, let us take a look at electronics and tech manufacturer Venture Corp. Last Friday, their share price did 1.89% or 26 cents to close at $13.48. CGSCIMB cut venture target price to $15.90 from $16.51 due to weaker demand outlook and inventory adjustments from its customer. Looking at the price chart of Venture Corp, the prices has been on a downtrend after hitting a high in February last year at $18. Prices also bottomed out somewhere in December at $11.36. And since the October low, prices have been on an uptrend again and hit a high of $13.98 in earlier part of this month in January. Last Friday, the slump in the share price actually tested the 200 days moving average at $13.79, which is a major long-term resistance level. The share price is now resting just above the 50 days moving average at $13.32, which is a pivot level. For the uptrend that we saw in the past three months to continue, prices would need to stay above the 50 days moving average level. The MACD indicator is now negative with the MACD line diverging away from the signal line downwards. This indicates that the downtrend momentum may accelerate downwards in the near term. The RSI reading also took a plunge to 47 last Friday after hitting a high of 60 during the middle of the week. So with both indicators signaling that the downtrend is likely to continue, the year-to-date high at $13.98 as well as in 200 days moving average at $13.79 seems to be the preferred entry for a short position on Venture Corp. And that's all I have for this week's update. We do appreciate your support by giving us a like and a thumbs up or share and hit that subscribe button to stay up to date to our latest content and I'll see you again next week in the next Technical Insights.